They scored like four touchdowns in three minutes. It was amazing. It was amazing. It was amazing. Amen. We're going to go ahead and get started, y'all. God has been good to us once again. Look at this weather. Somebody say amen. 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 Look at this weather that the Lord has blessed us with once again. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to start this morning with our uh, Sunday school lesson. And Minister Dwayne, if you could come on forward at this time. Amen. Somebody say amen. 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 And y'all, at the end of church, if you get a chance to look inside the sanctuary, there's been a lot of work done. Oh, 
faced the Amalek threat, now they faced another potential problem, one that was what much subtler than the previous challenges, but a serious one nonetheless. The challenge was recognized by only a visitor, an outsider. Jethro, the priest of the Midian, who is sometimes called Rebu, was Moses' father-in-law. After working for Jethro for 40 years, Moses had departed from Egypt in obedience to the Lord's command. So there we see, how can Moses first be obedient? Or how can a person be obedient to God? They have to first be obedient. They have to first be obedient before they can do anything else. And we can see here where Moses was obedient. Amen. Now that the people had come out of Egypt and into the wilderness, Jethro came out to greet them, accompanying him with Moses and his wife, Zipporah, and the couple's two sons, Jeshom and Eliezer. We do not know a great deal about Jethro's faith, but he certainly seemed to have faith in Israel's God. The victory over the army of Egypt had undoubtedly reached the ears of Jethro, and he was anxious for details concerning his event. Having heard of the goodness and the greatness of Jehovah, he rejoiced and had praise to God. Jethro had not seen the things of Moses, and the people had witnessed, but he believed them and acknowledged that the Lord as the God who had delivered the people from under the hand of the Egyptians. The morning after Jethro's arrival, Moses sat to, the, to judge the people. It's clear from what follows that Moses was hearing disputes among the people in judging criminal cases. As a nation's leader, he would naturally be looked to for such service. So we know that too, when any, any type of uh, disagreement or something comes up or something like that, we know that we have a person here that leads us, is the person that helps us to uh, uh, distinguish between those problems. While Moses has had been carrying on the work as a judge for some time in a satisfactory way, on this day, the people were waiting in line from early in the morning till the evening for a chance to speak with him. Moses gave the entire hearing matters brought before him. In fact, it appears he was not even able to complete his task in a day's time. Perhaps the travels and the challenges as the nation journeyed through the wilderness had delayed the judicial process. This would have been compounded by the fact that such a vast number of people, probably more than two million, undoubtedly would have many, many issues and concerns. So it looks like he had a lot of cases that he had to deal with from reading this text. Moses' father-in-law was a leader amongst the Midianites and undoubtedly was unfamiliar with the demands of such a job. Observing Moses as he judged the people, it became clear to Jethro that the practice could not continue. It was simply too much. So we see here that Moses needed some help. That's right. He needed some help. And we need to understand that the way the church is set up is not set up as a total, you know, as a dictatorship where one person dictates everything. the nation. 
jurisdiction was presently functioning, surely it was his responsibility to settle civil disputes among the people. Jethro bluntly told Moses that what he was doing was not good. He did not mean for the people to deserve justice, but that Moses should not should have no role in dismissing the justice. However, it was clear to Jethro that the system was not working and he, in fact, was too great a burden for Moses alone. He warned that continuing on this path would wear Moses out and the people as well. So that was the whole point, y'all, why the system was set up so that uh, the man of God wouldn't be worn out. As Jethro saw it, Moses would be exhausted from the work. And it would, be, it would take him away from other critical responsibilities. In addition, the people would be frustrated because Moses could not possibly hear all their cases in a timely manner. All the cases that he had to judge. Even if we have the best of intentions, our plans and actions can sometimes be counterproductive. In fact, our godly motives, motives can even blind us to considering others and perhaps better ways of accomplishing God's purposes. It does us little good if our zeal for ministry leads us to a burnout. And that's the thing that we, as as teachers, preachers, ministers, and pastors, we don't want to get to the burnout stage, y'all. If y'all have noticed on TV, there's a lot of pastors and teachers and ministers that have just given up. They've given up the work. They've given up God. And why? Because they've taken on too much, and they simply burnt out. They burnt out. Right. And once you get to that point, it's kind of hard to, to reverse that. And, and sadly, even some have even uh, taken their own life. They've even committed suicide uh, because of the the burden of the cause. So that um, gives us even more more of a, uh, to let us know that we need to try to follow this principle so that these things don't happen. Amen. So as I come to a close, I'm going to move down to the end part of the lesson. Uh, Jethro went on to advise his son-in-law to appoint qualified men to aid in the task he was currently shouldering alone. What qualities much, much must such men possess? Jethro offered four qualities or four qualifications. First, they must be able men. They must be able men. The word here means strength. It certainly indi indicates the physical strength to handle the job that Jethro was proposing, but suggests moral strength as well. So not just physical strength, but moral strength, meaning that you were, you know, a person that was upstanding, upright with God. continuing fear and admonition of God. They must be sincere followers of the Lord who would take their responsibility before him seriously, showing the utmost reverence for him. So one example would be, you know, the house of God, you reverence it. You don't come to the God, to the house of God in any condition. So, so for example, you wouldn't come intoxicated. All right. Amen. Okay. It's an example. Third, they must be men of truth. This means they must be faithful in carrying out their jobs and faithful to the Lord who is their ultimate master. So that simply means any job that's assigned to you or any job that you um, maybe brought forth to the pastor that you want to do, just be faithful in it. Amen. Simply be faithful in it and own up to what you um, put yourself out to do. Okay, then I'm going to hit you off these last three principles and then I'm going to be done. There are at least three important principles that the incident illustrates. First, it demonstrates the importance of encouragement. Moses had received nothing but grief from his people in their initial steps of out of Egypt and into the wilderness. So even Moses, the man of God, he needed what? Encouragement. Everybody needs encouragement. It doesn't matter how high you are or how low you think you are. We all need encouragement. It must have been refreshing to receive encouragement, concern, and sound advice from Jethro, a non-Israelite. Second, it shows the wisdom of shared responsibility. There is no danger in one person trying to do too much, even if it involves good work. So we already covered that. And finally, 
Jethro's evaluation and proposal shows that God often supplies needs through other people's abilities and wisdom. That's yeah. right. That's right. The New Testament further emphasizes this truth when it speaks of the church as a body with each part contributing to its proper function. So that's just alluding to our bodies and each part of our body. Our hands have a function, our feet have a function, our legs have a function, each part of our body, our internal parts have a function. Jethro's wise advice is not just an interesting story, it's a wonderful example to us to let us be gracious in offering advice and to let us also be humble enough to accept my counsel. Amen. So that's going to conclude our lesson today, our lesson wrap-up review. Turn it back over to the hands of the pastor. Amen. 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 This is Mr. Dwayne. Amen. Amen. Awesome job. Awesome. Amen. Well, we're going to ask that you would pray for the brothers. Amen. The men of integrity, we have not practiced in a year. But that's all right. We are part of a whole praise team. You all are part of the praise team. All of y'all. Amen. We're all a part of the praise team. It's not about how you sound. It's about your heart. God listens to the heart. He doesn't listen to the melodious voice and this and that. It's the heart that, that counts. Amen. So God has been so good to us. We have a reason to praise him. So when we come up and sing these praise songs, you all ought to join in. Because you have a reason to praise God. Amen. 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 God has been good. If you think about it, you look at all everything that's going on around us with no hurricanes that hit here. One hit on one side of us. The other one hit on the other side of us. Nothing hit us. Amen. God has been blessing us. Amen. We got all kinds of stuff going on with fires all over the place. God has been good to us. You have a reason to say thank you, Lord. Let me hear somebody say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Well, at this time, we're going to have uh, the men of integrity come on up. Amen. Amen. Brothers are ready to come up and Amen. sing Zion unto God. Amen. Songs of Zion unto the Lord. Amen. 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 We have some relatives over here, here from Lafayette. Amen. All right. Our cousins over there. Amen. All right. They just stuck in on us. Look at that. They just stuck in on us this morning. Amen. All right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Amen. And that, that's good news too, that we're not in this by ourselves. But we have somebody. I can call my brother and my sister when I'm going through something and, and ask them to pray with. I got some battle buddies. I call them battle buddies. Amen. To go to battle and prayer. Amen. To pray over situations that may be going on in our lives. Amen. We got somebody. Hallelujah. 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 I need you. You need me. We're all a part of God's body. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yes. We need you, Lord.
really strong. Amen. 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 Because a lot of times we can say we love somebody and don't show them anything. Right. Amen. Amen. You come to people and they, they say they love you, but then when you're in need of something, they, they, don't, they don't need to know you. Amen. Amen. They're not there for you. Amen. Oh, if you yeah. love somebody, you're going to be there for them. That's right. Amen. You're going to show them some love back. And love right. is a verb. Love is not a noun. Love shows some action. Yeah. That means you got to show yeah. something. You Amen. Show something. When you come up to someone and you're a down and out, why would you want to go to somebody you know is going to mistreat you or do you wrong? Amen. I want to come to somebody I know is going to do me right. And I want somebody to be able to come to me knowing that I'm going to do right for them. Amen. 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 I love you. I need you to survive. Amen. 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 We thank God for the men of integrity. Amen. As I told you, we haven't practiced in a year. Amen. So God is still blessed. Amen. We still went on in the name of the Lord anyhow. Anyhow. Amen. I'm going to look country on you. Anyhow. Amen. Anyhow. Amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to have our inspirational moment and our scripture reading. Amen. This is Carolyn here. Amen. Come on, Sister Carolyn. Amen. Amen. We have our scripture reading and our inspirational message. If you come here needing a word from the Lord or come here seeking to hear a word from the Lord, then that's what you should be doing right now is waiting to hear a word from the Lord. Amen. You should be right now listening to hear a word from the Lord because you ask him to speak to you. Well, you've got to listen. Amen. He's going to speak to you through song, through prayer, amen, through inspirational moment. Amen. But you've got to be ready to hear and listen. Amen. Remove everything else out of the way. Amen. It's just like Moses going on holy ground. God said, take the shoes off your feet for the ground you're standing on is holy ground. Don't bring that other stuff in here. Amen. Come in. This is holy ground. Amen. We're coming to hear a word from the Lord on today. Amen. 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 Somebody say amen. 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 Mr. Karen. Today is Job chapter 3, verse 25, and it says, For the thing I greatly feared has come upon me, and what I dreaded has happened to me. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay, so um, the encouraging word for today, I want to encourage you all today, including myself, regarding what do we do when we don't know what to do? God has this answer in His Word. First, when we are not sure what to do, we must pray to God and ask for Him to help and direct us. That's right. Second, we must get into the Word of God and remind ourselves of God's promises. Then confess these promises and trust God to fulfill them. Let's go over a few of God's promises right quick. Okay? Um, promise of direction. Proverbs 3, verses 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not on your own understanding. Acknowledge the Lord in all thy ways, and he shall direct thy path. In the Amplified Version, it says, In all your ways, know and acknowledge and recognize him, and he will make your path straight and smooth, removing obstacles that block your way. This means as we completely trust God and choose to obey his word, God will direct our paths in the right direction. Okay? And moving on to the promise of provision. Matthew 6 and 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And amplifies this, but first and most importantly, seek, aim, and strive after his kingdom and his righteousness, his way of doing and being right, the attitude and character of God, and all these things will be given to you also. This means practice living a life of holiness. That's right. Obeying God, repenting when you mess up, yes. and God will give you everything you need.
asking until you receive the answer, the breakthrough. Never give up. Keep seeking until you find the answer. Never give up. Keep knocking until the door opens. Never give up. Yes. Keep praying. Keep fasting. Keep obeying. Keep feasting off of the word. Then God will answer, deliver, and bless. Amen. In the natural, when you knock on someone's door that you really need them to answer the door, you do not knock only one time. Come out. Give up. Instead, you knock a few more times. Then you may leave and come back to knock more and or you may call them on the phone and then send them emails. Ask someone else to call them for you. You really seek after this person. So we should do the same towards God. That's Keep right. seeking him, right. asking him without giving up That's on God right. until right. God answers. That's right. And another promise is promise of granted desires. Psalms 37 and 4. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. This means enjoy living an obedient lifestyle with praying, trusting, obeying, etc. And God will grant you the desires of your heart. Promise of promotion. Psalms 37 and 34. Wait on the Lord and keep his way, and he shall exalt thee he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. This means continue to obey God, honoring God with your life, even as you work. And God will promote you. And before it is all over, you will see your enemy demoted, moved out the way. Okay, and promise of deliverance. This is the last promise uh, example. Psalms 20, 22. Say not thou, I will rec recompense evil, but wait on the Lord, and he shall deliver you. This means do not return evil for evil, but instead continue to trust and obey God, and he will deliver you. Notice all these promises that I've mentioned all have something in common. This common factor is that we all have a part to do, and we must do our part, and God will do his part. That's right. We ask, keep asking, then God answers. We knock, keep knocking, then God opens the door. We seek, keep seeking, then God provides that which we are seeking. We seek God's ways first and obey, then God provides all that we need. We delight and enjoy living holy, obedient lives, then God gives us the desires of our hearts. Thank you, Lord. We trust God, we lean not on our own understanding, we choose God's ways, then God directs our paths. We trust and obey God even as we work. Then God promotes us and he allows us to watch our enemies be demoted or moved out of the way. Okay, and we control ourselves without repaying evil for evil. Then God delivers us. We must all be encouraged to go to God in prayer about everything, especially when we are unsure what to do. Then we must go into God's word to learn of and confess God's promises. Amen.
We thank you that we have life, health, and strength and the activity of our limbs, clothes in our right minds. We thank you, Father God. We thank you that we have clothes over our, on our backs and, 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 and food on our table, Father God, and roofs over our heads. We thank you, Lord. Father God, you are the great I am. And God, we just want to say we love you, Father God. We trust and believe, Father. As Carolyn uh, just read a minute ago, Father God, trust in the Lord with all thine heart yeah. and lean not to thine own understanding and right. all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct That's our right. path. Well, Father God, we thank you for directing our path. Father God, we thank you that we can trust in an almighty God. Father God, and not trust in idols and everything else, Father God, and, and making other gods out of everything else, Father God. We can trust our one true God. And Father God, we just want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. So many of us don't realize what we're saying thank you about. We have a reason to say thank you. Father God, we could have been sick. Father God, we could have been dead and buried in our grave, Father God. We could have been lying up, Father, in the hospital right now. Father God, there's so many things that could have happened that didn't happen. So we say thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father God, that you are a healer. And when you're a provider, Father God, and you're making a way out of no way, we just want to say thank you. Thank Father God, we thank you for this brand new glorious day, Father God. But there's no clouds and no rain or anything, yeah. Father God, but a, a sunshiny day that we can come into this yard yeah. and have a church yard service, Father God. Yeah. And we just want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father God, thank you for everything that's happened thus far. Father, we thank you for those that are here. We thank you for traveling grace for those that have traveled far distances to be here. We thank you, Father God. We dare not take any of it for granted. Yeah. God, we we just want to say thank you, Master. Father God, we thank you for those that are here today once again, Masters. Those that we have family members that we haven't seen, Master. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. Father, we just give you glory, honor, and praise, Master. And we thank you for the word that's about to go forth. And we ask that you would speak your word, Father God. Remove me out of the way, Father God. You send your word, Father God. Use me as a mouthpiece. Oh, Father God, I hide behind the cross, Father God, and let you come forth. Oh, God, we just want to say thank you, Lord, for this word that's about to go forth. Somebody is about to be fed, Father God. Father, I ain't talking about no physical food, no breakfast this morning. Somebody has some sausage and biscuits this morning, but they about to get some spiritual, some spiritual sausage and biscuits right now, Father. Father God, and that kind of that kind of food fills you up. And Father God, we just want to say thank you, Lord. We give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated. We are about to hear a word from the Lord. I want to just one more time just thank my relatives for being here from Lafayette. Uh, my aunt, my aunt has a uh, birthday party. Patricia, and they've come down to help celebrate her birthday, and I uh, thank them for joining us this morning for, for the worship service, amen? amen? Amen. God sees all you do, amen? Have Hebrews 6 and 10, he sees all you do, and he remembers it, amen? amen? Amen. And for those that came last week, we had a blessing last week, amen? Dr. J. preached for so long, amen? Amen. And everyone, those that came out, we came out, we braved the weather, amen? We had a little rain at the end, but you know what? There was a blessing in the present. There was a blessing in the present. Amen. And we realize the sun weren't able to make it. There were many things that's going on. And God sees that also. Amen. But we just thank God for you all being here today. Y'all, 2020 has been something else. Yes, yes. I know Minister Dwayne talked about it last week. He talked about the hurricane train. Amen. We had like five hurricanes at one at one time. That, I don't think this ever happened. And there's just so many different things that's happening in this world. So much is happening. And you know, if you want to look for something to be worried about, you'll find it. If you want to look for something to be fearful about, you'll find it. But if you want to look for blessings, you'll find it. If you want to look and see what the Lord has done, you'll find it. Amen. If you go seek God's word and you want an answer from the Lord, you'll find it. Amen. Amen. The answers are there. Whatever you're looking for, that's what you're going to find. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to go to God in prayer with this, this service on today. And, uh... You know, so much has happened, as I said, in 2020. One of the principals at my school, I'm now assistant principal at Ball High School, and I coach football. So yesterday, we had a football game yesterday at 1 o'clock. So we were on the field standing up in the heat from 1 o'clock to 4. Just standing up in the heat, just baking in the heat. Amen. So uh, if you see me, see a little kind of kind of fatigued today. I'm a little fatigued, but I'm going on in the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And the strength of the Lord. Amen. God is still strengthening us, y'all. No matter what you were going through, no matter what we have gone through or going through, amen, because 2020 is not over, amen. There may be some other things that's going to happen, but we got to have faith in God, amen. Well, 2020, as I said, we had one of our assistant principals at my school. He was saying, man, 2020 has been so bad. Man, I'm so worried. He said, I, he sent a text message to everybody, and the text message showed Galveston Beach. It showed
shows the waters at the beach and everything. And then it shows God's Philip coming out of the waters at the beach. He said, I'm so, 2020 has been so crazy. I'm expecting to see God's Philip come out of the beach. Amen. I'm like, boy, I'm telling you. Now, if that happens, now, that, that, now that's really going forward with 2020. But, but, but the way things are happening right now, you just never know what's about to happen. Amen. But we got to have faith in God. God is still in control. Amen. As I said, we've encountered so much. Even our conversations have changed. The way that we respond to different things. You know, I've heard people, and even me sometimes, I've been feeling like, you know, oh my goodness, what else could go wrong? Do you ever find yourself saying something like that? What else could go wrong? Oh, what's going to happen now? Oh, I'm so tired. What, what's, what else could happen? Could anything be worse than this? All that kind of stuff. Amen. We say things like that, but when we say things like that, that almost gives power to fear. Because we're saying that something may happen. Something may happen. I'm, I'm fearful something may happen. I'm fearful if I'm fearful. When you keep feeding fear, fear is going to grow. But when you keep fa feeding faith, uh, uh, Pastor Wesley talked about this. If you keep feeding faith, then that's what's going to grow. Amen? So we want to make sure we're feeding the right thing. Amen? We want to feed the right How many of y'all want to feed the right thing? Amen? How many of y'all want to feel the faith that comes from God? Amen? Feed that. Amen? Let's try feeding that. Amen? Amen. But you know... With everything else that's going on, fear, doubt, and worry. Those three words seem to just be looming over everything. Yes. Fear, doubt, and worry. Amen. Well, you know, let, let, before I go too fast, let me digress a little bit. Amen. I'm talking about fear, doubt, and worry. You know, when I was a little kid, I, I, I used to watch cartoons a lot. I don't know if y'all remember Bugs Bunny. Amen. Y'all remember Bugs Bunny? Amen. Bugs Bunny was the coolest cartoon character on TV. That brother was cool. I don't care what was going on against him, he was cool. And he had three main enemies that are always trying to come up against him. All kind, always ready to try to do something up against Bugs Bunny. Do y'all remember Elmer Fudd? Yeah. Elmer Fudd. I'm going to kill the wabbit, kill the wabbit, kill the wabbit. Y'all remember that? Elmer Fudd was always trying to kill the rabbit. I'm going to kill the wabbit. Bugs Bunny wasn't even worried about that. He wasn't worried about Elmer Fudd. He didn't have any fear, worry, or doubt. He wasn't worried about that. Bugs Bunny was the coolest thing. And then he also, he had others that was always constantly. He had Yosemite Sam. Yosemite Sam couldn't have been about that tall. But he was like, ooh, I hate that rabbit. Ooh. Like he was all that he has little guns with him. And he's always trying to do something. But Bugs Bunny wasn't worried about that. Bugs Bunny didn't have any fear or any worry or any doubt. Hey Amen. Bugs Bunny had it going on. Hey Amen. But then there was one more. Daffy Duck. Daffy Duck always tried to do something against Bugs Bunny also. Suffering succotash. You remember he always said that. Always trying to do something against Bugs Bunny. But what would Bugs Bunny say? Every time something tries to come up against Bugs Bunny, he says, What's up, Doc? Y'all remember that? What's up, Doc? He was cool. What's up, Doc? Hey, Amen. When we're dealing with issues that come in our life, we just need to say, What's up? What's up? Our God in heaven has control. Our God in heaven is watching over and protecting us. What's up? Amen. That's the kind of response we should have as Christians. Now, there are so many unbelievers out there that have all these worry and, and fear and everything else, but we should be calm. Amen. We should be calm and just lead them to the Word of God. Amen. Let them know that our God can do anything but fail. Our God makes the impossible possible. Amen. That's what we need to come back with. Amen. Instead of any other type of response. Amen. But then I was talking about the cartoon characters. We had another cartoon character. Amen. Roadrunner. Y'all remember Roadrunner? And the coyote, Wiley Coyote, the song from Roadrunner. Roadrunner, the coyote's after you. Roadrunner, if you catch what you do. Y'all remember that? Amen. Roadrunner wasn't worried about nothing. Coyote always tried to come up with all kinds of stuff. They even had that song from Roadrunner. And listen to the passion of the song of Roadrunner. I want to give y'all the passion of the song of Roadrunner. It says, that coyote's really a crazy clown. But it's deep. When will he learn that he never can mow him down? Poor little roadrunner never bothers anyone. Just running down the road, his idea of having fun. That's roadrunner, y'all. Roadrunner wouldn't worry about nothing. Wouldn't, 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 amen. Coyote, he, and every time he tried to come up with a contraption, Coyote always had these big sticks of dynamite and bombs and everything else, trying to set it up to blow up roadrunner, and it always blew up on Coyote. It always blew up on Coyote. Satan and, and his demons always try to have something to come up against us. But when we go to God in prayer, it always blows up on them. That's the, that's the response, and that's what we should have inside, knowing that whatever tries it, no matter, no matter what the, the devil tries to come up against us, when we call on the name of the Lord, it's going to blow up on him. Amen. If it's sickness, so no matter what it is, financial, amen, relationship issues, whatever it can be, whatever, 
much English. But every time we ask him about how much work he's doing in there, he says, Jesus, Jesus Christo. Jesus Christo, give me power. Jesus Christo, give me power. That's a big deal. understand what's going on. Amen. So when you call upon the name of the Lord, you got some power. I don't care what language you talk, you got some power. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus Christo. Jesus Christo. Amen. But looking at fear, worry, and doubt. Fear, worry, and doubt. They're on the opposite end of faith, trust, belief, and hope. So it's like a, a balance. It's like a scale. Amen. If you put more on this side, that side goes down. This side goes up. So what, what, what end of the scale are you are you on? Amen. What, what part of the scale? Well, how's your scale in your life? Amen. Is it weighing down on the, the fear, worry, and doubt? Or is the scale going down on, on and have more weight on your faith? Amen. On, on your, your trust, your hope, your belief in God. Where is your scale at? Amen. 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 Sometimes our scale kind of teeter-totters. Make sure teeter-totters in the right direction. Having faith in God, knowing that God is able to do anything but fail. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Somebody else say amen right there. Somebody else say amen right there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That scale, that scale. Amen. And we got, that, as I said, there's so many things that's, that's going on the scale to try to help us push to the other side. As I talked about, we, we have coronavirus. And if I leave something out, y'all may, I may, there's so many things that's happening in 2020, I may leave something out. We got coronavirus. We got the wildfires. We got the hurricane train. We got the protest. We got the protest. We've got the protest. It's been huge, y'all. It's been huge. Amen. So we got the political division in the country. Republicans and Democrats, they can't agree on anything. Even with getting a judge, a new judge in office. Amen. They can't agree anything they come up with, they disagree on it. And one group is always smarter than the other group. It's what they think. Amen. Amen. So we got the political division in the country. We got the concern about the outcome of the presidential election. Amen. And the possibility of, of repercussions from that. We've had elections all along. Amen. There's always been some issues with some elections. Amen. But God is still in control. God is still in control. Who is your leader? Amen. We have the President of the United States, but who is your leader? Our leader is God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit. Amen. What you got, God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit, then everything else is going to fall in place. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness and all things, all other things will be added. Amen. we got to seek God, not the President, not the politician. Amen. Not anybody else. Amen. People can't find jobs. I know that's real. There's some real issues with that, with, with those with that being evicted from apartments. It's all over America. It's all kinds of stuff that's happening yeah. with that. And so yesterday, as I was thinking about all the things that's going on, I said, boy, now I just told y'all we shouldn't be thinking what else could happen. Well, on my way to work yesterday, I was like, what else could happen? Well, something else did happen. I got a, a, a news. We got a news email from our school system that Brazoria County had danger in their water. They had brain-eating amoeba in their water, wow. in their drinking water. And so we got the message not to drink any water. Now, we're on the way to that area to a football game tomorrow. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, then, uh, yesterday. We're on our way to a football game, and we get the message on the way over there. Oh, there is possibly amoeba brain-eating Wow. Amoeba in, in the water system. So, uh, so I'm like, okay, God, okay. Now you telling me, Father, I, I'm saying not to, to, uh, not to, not to be fearful and not to worry and not doubt. And this comes up. God sometimes will test you and see where your faith is. I could have easily said, oh man, let's not go to the football game. They got, they got amoeba eating, brain eating uh, amoeba. They got all kinds of stuff like that. Now, well, you know, you can have that type of, of attitude. Now, now. But where's your faith? Now, sometimes you have to use wisdom that God gives you, too. Amen. You can't just jump into stuff that God is saying, don't go there. Amen. Don't do this. you got to use some wisdom and go to God and pray for that. Amen. But you gotta, you got to have faith. Amen. So this brain-eating amoeba did kill a young a, a child last week. And it was a six-year-old child. So it is real. It, it really was real. But as we were at the game, we were getting text messages that the ban of not drinking water had been lifted. But I still didn't drink anything over there. Right? Now, we brought our own water. I got some bottled water. I didn't want to, uh, no, uh -uh, I ain't drinking that. I don't like the people like that. Amen. Amen. So, so, you know, we, we still got, just got to be watch, watchful. But our hearts and prayers goes out to that family who lost that, that six-year-old boy. Amen. And the things are just happening in this world, y'all. Things are just happening in this world. But, you know, in the face of crisis, Saints of God should have a different reaction than the unbelievers. In the face of concerns and issues and problems, the saints of God should have a different response to whatever's going on around. Our response to crisis and breaking news, you know, so 
when it's seen and then I always got that breaking news. Our response should be messages that are filled with the faith, hope, and belief, and trust in God. Our response should have something like, in God we trust. And, and our God is in control. We should have a response like that. Amen. Our response should be intertwined with Psalms 121, 1 through 2. I will look to the hills from which cometh my help. My help coming from the Lord which made heaven and earth. I will look to the hills. Amen. I will look to my God. Amen. And all of our help comes from God. All of our help. I said all of our help comes from God. Somebody ought to say amen to that. All of our help comes from God. Amen. So our answer should be intertwined with that. Our answer should be intertwined with Ephesians 3 and 20. Amen. Our God is able to do exceeding abundantly. Above all, we can never ask or think. According to the power that works within us, our answer should be intermingled with that. Amen. That's what our responses should be. Amen. According to the power that works within us, our responses should be filled with, with, uh, with Matthew 19 and 26. Matthew 19 and 26, it says, with man, that is impossible. But with God, oh, oh, somebody been reading. With God, all things are possible. With God, all things are possible. Amen. It's like the song that James Cleveland wrote. Do y'all know that song? Where is your faith? Tell me where is your faith in God? That song got me through a lot of stuff, y'all. I'm, I'm, I'm bringing it up, but that song got me through a lot of tough times. Where is your faith in God? Amen. Where is your faith? Where is your scale balancing? Where is it tipping to? Amen. Is it tipping on the end of faith or is it tipping on the end of, of fear? Amen. Amen. Your faith should be strong. Your faith should be outweighing any type of fear. Amen. Amen. So, we're just going to talk a little bit about fear. Amen. Let's look at the word fear. And I won't be long. I won't be long. Looking at the word fear, one of our greatest presidents, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, one of the greatest presidents, in his 1933 inaugural address says, there's nothing to fear but fear itself. There's nothing to fear but fear itself. Do you know sometimes we let fear outweigh the real problem? That's right. Hey Amen. It could be something that may, may be really small that's really not that bad. But when we think on it so much, it starts. the fear starts outweigh, outweighing the problem. You almost forget what the problem was because there's so much fear that takes over. Hey Amen. But there's nothing to fear but fear itself. Hey Amen. We cannot let fear overcome us. Hey Amen. We cannot let fear weigh us down. Hey Amen. But... We as humans, as I said, we can sometimes, we give power to fear. We give power to fear. Fear becomes greater than the actual threat. Let's look at the acronym for fear. The acronym, one of the acronyms for fear, F-E-A-R. False evidence appearing real. Let me say that again, if somebody didn't catch that. False. That means it ain't real. That, that means it ain't true, it ain't real. False evidence. So evidence that you make it up ain't even there. False evidence appearing. That means you made it come up. You made it appear. Appearing real. It ain't even real, but we done made it real. Amen. So we can't be weighed down by fear. False evidence appearing real. Amen. Well, I just got to the title of today's sermon. As I told you, well, it won't be long, y'all. I won't be long. Amen. Amen. So the title of today's sermon is, What If This Happens? Will I be fearful or faithful? What if this happens? Now, you can put your own this in there. You can put hurricanes. You can put everything else in there. What if this happens? Will I be fearful or faithful? Amen. That is the title of today's message. Now, I'm going to take you to Job chapter 3 and 25. And, 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 and you know, just to talk a little bit about the book of Job. In the first chapter of Job, it starts off saying, well, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me digress. Let me slow down. Let me go ahead and get today's scripture. Okay. Today's sermon is uh, 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 fear or uh, fearfulness or uh, faithfulness. Okay. I'm um, looking down here right here. Okay. Job 3 and 25. It says, For the thing I greatly feared has come upon me, and what I dreaded has happened to me. The thing that I greatly feared, sometimes we can think about stuff so much and and you give power to fear and sometimes it can happen. You know, I, I, I really, y'all, I have a, a concern of bees. I'm not going to say a fear of bees, okay? I'm not going to give credence to it, all right? I do have a concern with bees. And, and, and every time I see a honeybee or a wasp or something, I have a concern. I'm not going to say I'm afraid, but I'm not going to stand there and just watch it. Hey, I'm going to get out the way. Amen. So I have a concern with, bee, with bees. Amen. But what you think about all of
practice. Let me hear you feel one time this was his regular practice. Oh, but something is going on in the spiritual realm. Something was going on in the spiritual realm. Amen. Now, I was talking about uh, uh, the fearfulness, the fearfulness. Now, we can't give credence to the power of fear. And, and, and I don't want to keep looking at the verse Job 3 and 25. I want to look at chapter 4 also, y'all. Because I, I, I think we need to give some hope. There, there needs to be some hope here. So I'm going to look at Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 9. Now, we can either think on fear always and keep fear on our mind, or we can do this. Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 9. And just be patient with me, and I want you to let this just uh, set, settle inside you. Amen. Let, let the word settle inside you. Verse 4, it says, Always be full of joy in the Lord. Again, I say rejoice. Verse 5, Let everyone see that you are considerate in all you do. Remember, the Lord is coming soon. Let everyone see that you have the joy of the Lord on you. Amen. Sometimes you can look at people, they're just sitting there looking. No joy, no anything. They're just looking at you. There's nothing there. Well, what? What's going on in your life? Amen. Amen. I, I may be having issues in my life. I may have, you know, I asked uh, 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 Minister Ophelia this morning. I said, Minister Ophelia, how you doing? She says, I'm doing, I'm doing good. Now, Minister Ophelia has gone through a lot of different operations. Sister Rhonda, too. They've gone through many different operations. But when you come to them and you ask them how they're doing, they are full of joy. Oh, I'm good. Oh, God is good. And they may be feeling, no, no telling what they may be feeling inside, but their response is, I'm feeling good. I'm fine. God is in control. God has got it. Whatever the situation is, God, not in that something and you don't really have much going in you that's, that's happening to you and you can't show no joy and they show joy no matter what they're going through we have to show our response should be to show some joy amen, amen. you should have it written all over your face you don't have to say a word amen you should have it just showing some joy just showing some joy amen so look at verse verse six verse six six it says don't worry about anything instead pray about everything tell god what you need and thank him for all he has done Tell him what you need. Ask the Lord. Tell him what's on your mind, what you need. Amen. And then thank him for all he has done. Amen. While you ask him for something, you need to be thanking him for something. Amen. Amen. Because God has already done so much for you. Even ask, God has already answered some of your prayers before you even ask. So you ought to just say thank you right there. Amen. Amen. Just say thank you, Lord. Amen. You don't even know what it is sometimes. You could have had a bad accident. You could have had something to happen to you, and it didn't happen. You ought to just say thank you because you don't even know what God has done for you already. It says, then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true. Fix your thoughts on what is true. Put your mind on what God does. Amen. Don't put your mind on what's happening around you. Put your mind on Jesus. Amen. Put your mind on Jesus. Amen. I, the song we used to sing, I woke, up, I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. Amen. Well, wake up in the morning with your mind stayed on Jesus. Amen. Don't try to look at everything else that will cause fear, doubt, and worry. Look at that which will give you joy. Look at the one that will give you peace. Amen. Look at the one that's healing your body. Look at the one that woke you up this morning. Amen.
hey man, I'm going through what Job is going through. I must be a Job. I'm like, no, nah, brother, don't say that. Don't you don't know what you're saying. Hey man, we, ain't, we can't even touch that. We can't even touch what Job is going through. Hey man, but Job has been through a whole lot. We, we, see, we saw that in uh, verse 1, the things were going fine with Job. Everything was fine. Now, as I told you, there's so much going on in the spiritual realm with Job. There's so much going on in the spiritual realm with us also. Looking at Job. Chapter 1 still, verses 6 through 12. Let's see what's going on in the spiritual realm. There's something going on in the spiritual realm. Job chapter 1, verses 6 through 12. It says, One day the members of the heavenly court came to present themselves before the Lord. And the accuser, Satan, came with them. Okay, so now we are moving into a spiritual realm. Amen. So it's not a natural or physical way. You can see it's in the spiritual realm. There's some things that's about to go on. Amen. And then God says, where have you come from? The Lord asked Satan. Satan answered the Lord, I have been patrolling the earth, watching everything that's going on. Satan is roaming around like a roaring lion, lion seeking whom he may devour. And he's doing it still today. Right. He's going around. So he's telling God, I've been patrolling, I'm going around. I, I, I'm rolling around, I'm chilling, I'm going around here to see who I can mess up, who I can mess with. You might be the one. Amen. We, I might have been the one. Amen. The Satan is always busy like that. Amen. Amen. It says, and then the Lord has Satan, have you noticed my servant Job? Have you noticed my servant Job? Job is going, everything's fine. Job just going on about his life, everything's cool. But God says, have you considered my servant, servant Job? We can put ourselves in that, at that place too. Have you considered my servant Melvin? Have you considered my servant, amen, Dwight? Have you considered my servant? Sometimes God will allow things to happen to us to make us strong. And we, now, now, I'm going to go into that in just a second. I won't be long. I'm going to go into that. And then it says, have you noticed my servant Job? He is the finest man in all the earth. This brother had it going on. God said that. He is the finest man in all the world of earth. Amen. I, I want God to be able to say something good like that about me. Amen. How many of y'all? Amen. How, how many of y'all want God to be able to say something like that about you? Amen. You can put your hand. I see some hands going up. I want God to be able to say something. Not not God to be able to say other things. Oh, I don't know about this brother here. This brother tripping me out there trying to mess around with all kind of women. He on this. He doing this. He doing that. Amen. I don't want God to be saying that about me. Amen. Do y'all want God to be saying that about you? I don't want God to be saying that. Now, we all have a past. We all have chapters in our book. Close that chapter and open a new chapter. Amen. Let's start a new chapter where God can say some good things about you in that new chapter. Amen. 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 It says he's the finest man in all the earth. He is blameless, a man of complete integrity. He fears God and stays away from evil. Satan replied to the Lord, yes, but Job has good, good reason to fear God. You have always put a wall of protection around him and his home and his property. You know, God, sometimes he puts a hedge of protection around you and things just can't happen to you. Once God puts something up, nothing can penetrate it. Amen. We always pray for an edge of protection around us to keep us safe from all hurt, harm, and danger and any type of sickness or disease. And God will do that. He'll put an edge of protection. But sometimes God will allow things to happen. He'll allow certain things to go through. Just to show Satan and all of his people that my child believes and my child has faith and my child can make it through. Amen. I, you know, sometimes we in that position, y'all. Yeah. We're in that position. Amen. Some of us may have just been in that position. Somebody may be going through that position right now. Somebody may be getting ready to go to that position. Amen. Amen. He says you have made him prosper in everything he does. Look how rich he is. But reach out and take everything he has and he will surely curse you to, his, to your face. God says, all right, you may test him, the Lord said to Satan. Do whatever you want with everything he possesses, but don't harm him physically. Okay, come on, Amen. Right you, right Satan, you are I'm in control, Satan. You, know, you can't do what you just want to do. you got to come and ask permission from me. You have a little power, but you have no authority. you got to come to me for anything. Amen. Amen. So God just had to, just to remind him. Amen. Remind Satan, you ain't all that. Amen. I'm just using you. Amen. Amen. He says, all right, you may test him. The Lord said to Satan, do whatever you want with everything he possesses, but don't harm him physically. So Satan left the Lord's presence. What do you think Satan did when he left the Lord's presence? He was on his job. Right. Satan's about to get busy and try to mess with Job. He, and just like you, amen. God, you know, Satan is always trying to roam around and see who he can mess with. Right. He, you got to stay ready. We got to be steadfast, unmovable, always abide in the word of the Lord. Yeah. Know that your labor is not in vain. Amen. But God, you got to always stay in the word of the Lord. Always going on your knees on prayer in prayer. Going on your knees in prayer. Amen. Always seeking God's face. Seeking the God's word. Always. Amen. Because you don't know when your number's coming up. When your time may come up. You've got to be ready. we got to stay also. we got to be also ready. Amen. So, now we talked about chapter 1 a little bit. Now we know in chapter 2, God allows Satan to harm Job's body. 
But then he tells him, you can't kill him. That's right. Yeah, he goes, yeah, Satan, you can do this, but you can't kill him. That's what and Satan got to do what God says. He can't go no further than what God will let him go. In your life, he can't do no further, no further than God will let him go. Isn't that good news? Isn't that good news? Hey, Amen. Those that may be going through something, hey, amen. He, he can't go no further than God allows him to go. Hey, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That, that, that's kind of like a praise break right there. That's kind of like a praise break. Somebody needs to say hallelujah. Glory to God. Hey, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. So we see that now we're still in the spiritual realm, y'all. There's some things going on in the spiritual realm. The middle part of the book of Job goes back and forth with conversations and with accusals, responses, uh, responses from Job's friends, Eliphaz, Bildad, and so far. Now, what kind of friends are that? These friends come upon you, and they just say, now, you already going through some stuff, and they're going to come make things worse. worse. Job, it must be something you've done. Job, you this. Job, you didn't do this. Job, you didn't do that. And Job was like, I haven't done anything. I've not done anything wrong. You know, no, it's not that. And so Job got tired of hearing them and stopped listening to them. Amen. And then Job had another friend to come upon him. His name is Elihu. Elihu had a little bit more truth than what he was saying. He was saying that, you know, sometimes God will allow you to go through some things. So that way you won't go through it again. Or it may be preparing you for something else that may be happening. God will allow you. So Elihu made a little sense. Now he had a little wavering in his script and his word also. But the, but for the most part, he had a lot of truth in what he was saying. Amen. So we now, now we see the conversation with with his friends. But then we're going to see the conversation with God to Job. Job got so frustrated and so much what he was going through. You know, and, and when we go, sometimes we go through so much in hard times, we start thinking kind of, you know, start thinking kind of crazy. Well, well, maybe I should die. You know, maybe this or maybe that or maybe. You know, we start thinking great stuff like that. Amen. But we got to trust in God. Right. And then God starts saying, well, hold up, Job. you criticizing me about this and you you saying that and you may be saying this. Now, Job never sinned from his lips, but he was just questioning the day I was born. I shouldn't have been born, that kind of thing. You know, and so God was saying, well, well where were you, Job? If you Come think on. you know all that, where were you when I created this? Hey, Amen. Look at the am animals. Look at how things, look at this earth and how things are still going the same way they've been going for thousands of years. Amen. Amen. Look how the rain comes and goes, the sun comes and goes. Amen. Look how animals, and the, the, the way that things work in this world, this world is symbiotic. Symbiotic means that things work together. Animals work with plants. Plants work with animals. There's a symbiosis that God has, has, has structured in this world. And God has structure. He has system. Everything is going the way, and, and it's been for thousands of years. We may have had extra hurricanes and extra things come up, but things are still the way God has it to be. There's still a systematic way that God has things operate. So he just reminded Job, Job, hold up now. I'm still in control and I run this here. Can you do this, Job? But Job, no, no, I can't do that. Job, no, he can't do that. Can any of y'all do that? No. None of us can do that. Only God can do that. Why, why not go to the one that can control everything? Why not go to, to him? Amen? Amen. All right, so something is going on in the spiritual realm. But guess what, y'all? There is a Job chapter 42. Everything has happened all the way from Job chapter 1 to chapter chapter 41. So much turmoil, so much suffering, so much struggling, so much pain, so much sickness. But there is a chapter 42. Come on, good news. Guess what, church? There's a chapter 42 in your life. Mm -hmm. There's a chapter 42 where God, God, you see what God did for Job? He he doubled him for the trouble. Amen. Come God on, gave him double for the trouble. God gave him more than he had the come first on. time. That's you have a, you have a Job chapter 42 in your life also. Amen. Well, God will allow things to happen, but when you call upon the Lord, when it's your season, or appointed time, set time, you will get double for your trouble. Amen. Well, God will bless you. Amen. You got a chapter 42 in your life. Hey, how many of y'all know there's a chapter 42 in your life? Amen. There's a chapter 42 in your life. I'm just letting you know that right now. I'm looking for that chapter 42. Some of y'all in the chapter 42 right now. Amen. Well, God is just blessing you over and over with all abundant blessings. Some of y'all just got out of chapter 42, but God just blessed you. Y'all, I've been in chapter 42 with money just showed up. Y'all know in January, when I was really sick, I was in chapter 1 through 41 at first, and then the chapter 42 came in my life, but God healed me. I don't know how it happened, but I know who did it. Amen. I know who did it. I had a chapter 42 in my life. Amen. Sister Phil, you had a chapter 42 in your life. Sister Ron, do you have a chapter 42 in your life? Amen. Hallelujah. Sister Karen, Sister Karen, you had a chapter 42. We all had a chapter 42 in our lives. But guess what? Some don't acknowledge it. Some don't acknowledge that you got a chapter 42 or you've had a chapter 42. Some just go by their way every day living like, oh, it just happened, it just happened. You better give God the glory. You better praise God for your chapter 42. Hallelujah. 
42. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Chapter 42. Amen. Well, y'all, I'm almost done with this. Talking about fear. We've been talking about fear and not giving power to fear. Now, what about worry? What about worry? Do you know worry is strong? Worry can cause all kind of sicknesses and illnesses in your body. When you worry so much, blood pressure, amen, migraines, all kinds of stuff can happen from worry. Now, sometimes people just have it, blood pressure, whatever, it could be for that, but a lot of times it's because you worry. Worry can bust the pipe. That's what they press. Now, pressure can bust the pipe. Worry is just like pressure that can bust a vein, amen, or bust an artery, amen. So we got to watch how we worry about things. And Jesus also said in Matthew 6, 20 to 25 through 34, Jesus said, don't worry about everyday life. Don't worry about all this stuff that's going on, amen. He says, don't worry about that. He, he got, he's telling you that he's got control. Don't worry about it. Look at this here. Have you ever heard of the word psychosomatic? Come on. How many of y'all have heard of the word psychosomatic? Psychosomatic is a term that you think about something so much. You think about, I got a pain. I haven't had a pain in my side, but I got a pain in my side now. I got a pain in my side. I got a pain. Before you know it, you're going to have a pain in your side. That's psychosomatic where your body is responding to your mind. Your mental thing. You're thinking, I'm sick. I'm sick. Something's wrong. Something's wrong. And your body's going to respond to that. That's psychosomatic. And psychosomosis can cause all kinds of issues in your body when you continually think about things like that. But also there's a word called being a hypochondriac. Right. Amen. A hypochondriac. A hypochondriac is someone that continues to have something wrong. Do y'all have been around them people that every time you roll up on them, you be like, hey man, what's going on? What's going on? Oh man. Yeah. I don't know, man. Yeah. I'm sick, man. I just, you know. Well, that was on Monday. Okay. Tuesday. What's up, man? What's up? What's up? This is Tuesday now. Man, I don't know. I'm just going. Yeah, man, it's Tuesday. Okay. You get all the way to Friday and Saturday. Brother, what's going on, brother? It's the weekend. Oh, man, I don't yeah. know. What's... Man, that's a hypochondriac that's continuing to find out something wrong with them. It's always something because they are constantly thinking about something being wrong with them. But when you think about good things, amen, as it said in Philippians, think on these things, the good things of the Lord, amen, and your body going to respond to that too. Right. How many of y'all know those people that have been in the hospital, been sick with, with heart or cancer or anything like that, and they have a good outlook and a, a, good, a strong faith in God, and no matter what it is, they, they, it ends up being healed faster or healed before somebody else that didn't have that. Amen. How many of y'all know that? Amen. How many of y'all When you think about good things and you think about the goodness of God and how God has made your body. Amen. We are fearfully and wonderfully made, but God made us. Amen. God can heal this body. He knows all about it. Amen. So we got to think good things. And your body will respond to good things. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. 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 So psychosomatic and hy hypochondriacs. Amen. We can't be that. We've got to be someone that's always, no matter how you're feeling. You roll up on me, brother, how you, Pastor Melvin, how you doing? Man, God is in control. God has got it. God's got favor. And a lot of times I always say, and people ask me, how you doing, man? He says, I'm blessed. I I'll say, I'm blessed and highly favored. Yep. I'll just come up with that because I feel blessed. No matter, I maybe have a toothache or anything else, but I'm blessed and highly favored. Because what, what I'm feeling, it could have been worse. What you're feeling, could have been worse. And that was always a could have been. Amen. Amen. But we got to have faith in God. Have faith in God. I'm almost done, y'all. Almost done. Something is going on in the spiritual realm. God is working things out. Now, we got to think on this. Look at Romans 8, 21. This is somebody. Somebody said this was that favorite verse. Amen. All things work together for good to them that love God. To them who are the called according to his purpose. All things work together. Now, I ain't talking about all good things. It could be some bad yeah, yeah, yeah. It can be some bad things, but all things work together for good to them that love God and for those who are the called according to your purpose, to his purpose. Amen. So no matter what you're going through, know that you in that all things. Yeah. And all things work together. And that all things work together for good. Know that you in that. Amen. Amen. We gotta have faith to believe that God is in control. Amen. You know, we gotta let go of the what ifs. You know, we all got the what ifs. Oh boy, I tell you, when the hurricane was about to come, well, you know, I heard a lot of what is. Oh man, what if it comes here? Oh man, what if it comes? What if it? Oh man, what if this? What if that? Oh man, what if? Okay. What ifs? Amen. That's what ifs. But what if it doesn't? Now, what ifs? A lot of times those what ifs don't even happen. We just made it bad. Amen. We were thinking so much about it. Now, sometimes what ifs are good if you want to use a what if to prepare for something. Amen. Sometimes what if this happens? Well, I need to prepare for this. What if this happens? I need to prepare for that. And that's good for preparation. What if? Amen. So we got to always be ready and planned. Amen. But not fearful. Yes. We can't be fearful. Amen. What if? Oh, oh what if this happens? No, no. We can't be fearful. What if? Okay, we're going to do this. Okay. What if? Okay, we're going to do this. We got things in, in place and prepared. That's what we're supposed to do. Not the negative what ifs, but the positive what ifs. Yeah. Amen. But we all have what ifs in our lives. We all have those what ifs. What if it rains? Well, let the rain wash the bugs off your windshield. Come on, here. Amen. What if it rains? Let the rain just wash the bugs off, off your windshield. What if? What if life is so rough on you and 
question, what if God blesses me? <laughs> okay. What if God heals me? Come on. Uh, all right. What if God provides? Come on. What if God makes a way out of no way? Oh, well, this is a big one. What if Jesus returns? Come on. Okay, let's take the what if out of God right there, because there's no what if. God will. Amen. Let's, let's just change that around a little bit. God is a healer. Ain't no what if. Ain't no if and a bust about it. Amen. Amen. My God will supply all of our needs, all of your needs, according to his riches and glory. Amen. My God is a provider. Amen. Ain't no what if, no if, and, and bust about that. Amen. Our God is a will in the middle of a will. Amen. Ain't no what ifs about that. Amen. Our God can do the impossible. He can make the impossible possible. Amen. God can do anything but fail. Ain't no what ifs there. Ain't no ifs, ands, or buts about that. God said it. That settles it. And I believe it. God said it. That settles it. And I believe it. Now, some people got that twisted a little bit. They said, God said it. I believe it. And that settles it. God said it. It's going to happen anyway, whether you believe it or not. Amen. God said it. That settles it. And I believe it. That's what we're supposed to say. Amen. Amen. What if God? What if God? What if God? No, God will. God will. Amen. So your scale should be, after today's sermon, your scale should be weighing a little bit more on that faith side, that hope side, that trust, that belief side. Your head, your scale should be leaning on that side. That other side should be just going up in the air. Just going on out the way. Amen. That doubt, worry, and fear. Just going on out the way. Amen. We've got to have faith in God. Have faith in God. Amen. And then the last one I said, what if Jesus returns? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, Jesus is returning. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus is coming too. So the only what if is when. What if he comes today? Are you ready? Are you ready? What if that? Amen. What if you haven't given your life to Christ? And you die in a part of your sins not knowing Christ. What if that? Amen. Where will you be? You're going to be forever with that accuser we just talked about. Satan. Amen. Be forever with him lost. Amen. But what if you accept Christ? What if you haven't accepted Christ and you do accept him today? What if? What if? What would happen if you do that? You will have life eternity with Christ. Amen. You will be able to be in heaven with, 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 with God. With God the Father, God the Son, and God. You will be forever eternally in heaven with God. Amen. You will be with Jesus. What if? What if that? That's, that's the what if that we need to put in right there. Amen. But you can't, you can't count on the other what ifs. You can't count on God. Amen. You can't count on God. Those other what ifs may or may not happen. Amen. But God will. Amen. God will. God will heal. God will do. God will provide. God will protect. God will defend. God will do anything but fail. Amen. You can always count on God. Let go of the what ifs and trust God. Amen. Let go of the what ifs and trust God. Let go of fear and pick up faith. What ifs? Amen. What if? What if? What if we today decided to accept Christ? And what if today we leave out of here and show somebody some love? What if? What would that do to that person? Showing some love. Showing that you care about somebody. Showing you love some. Showing somebody some love, joy, and peace. Amen. What if you do that? Amen. How would that person feel? That person would feel awesome. Amen. But you would feel good also. That you are giving some love to somebody. You are helping somebody. What if that? That's what that's what if we should be doing. Amen. We should be out here showing love. Amen. Showing showing love, caring for someone. We just talked about that. I love you. We all part of part of God's body. I need you. You need me. Amen. I love you. You love me. I pray for you. You pray for me. What if that? What if we do that? What if we give our lives to Christ today? And we've, we've already accepted Christ. But what if you are totally sold out for him? What if you are totally sold out for God? Amen. You may have been totally sold out last week, but you should be even more this week. Amen. Sold out for God. Everybody stand up on your feet. Stand up on your feet. Amen. Amen. What if we do everything that God tells us to do? What if we help somebody? What if we help somebody that's struggling? What if you have it in your means to help someone and you help them? But what if you have it in your means and you don't help them, then God is not pleased with that. Those are the what ifs of life. As I said, what if you give your life to Christ? If you haven't given your life to Christ, now is the time. The big what if. What if you do? What if you don't? I want to be a part of the what if you do. Amen. Amen. I want to be in heaven. Amen. I want to be with Jesus. Amen. I want to see God. I want to see his face. Amen. When I see Jesus, amen. Amen. You know those songs, walk around heaven all day. Amen. You know those songs. Amen. Just to behold his face. Amen. Those songs. What if? What if I accept Christ? All of that. Amen. All of that. Amen. You get to see his face. Be with him forever. But also here on earth. Heaven on earth. Y'all know the kids you sing that. Heaven on earth. Amen. Heaven on earth for those who are believers. Where God can continue to bless you, protect you, 
put a wall like he did Job. Amen. A wall around you. Amen. And the edge of protection around you. What if? What if he said Christ and you pray to God for your children like Job did? Amen. God will protect your children. Your grandchildren. What if? What if? What if? What if you don't? What if you do? Amen. Amen. Once again, if anyone else that needs to come and give your life to Christ. Amen. The time is now. Don't let this moment slip away. Because what if you walk out that gate and don't make it? You can't wait till tomorrow. Tomorrow's not promised. Come on, Shanti. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? Anyone else who would like to come? We thank God. Thank God for all that's happened on today. Amen. And we have Sister Shanti up here, and I think she may have something to say. Amen. Amen. How Satan is roaming around. He's trying to see 
seek who he can devour. Amen. And we just saw that with Job, how Satan uh, tried to come up on Job, and God allows certain things to happen, but it's going on in the spiritual realm. So right now, the things that we see in the natural is happening in the spiritual. So that's where we attack it in the spiritual. So we're going to have Pastor Wesley to go ahead and go to God and pray on this. What's, what is his name? Michael Johnson. Johnson. Father. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you right now, Lord God. We want to lift Lionel. Lionel, in the name of Jesus, we want to lift him up to you right now. Father, we're coming against that attack on his life, Father, in the name of you. Father, we just want to thank you, Lord God, that you, right now, right now, in the name of Jesus, the people who is coming up against our son has no authority. We bind it right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, that you place a covering over her son, Lionel, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, draw him closer to you, Lord God. Place your protection upon him, Father, in the name of Jesus. And Father, we just pray for all those who have evil thoughts, Lord God, that you send to one to take a word to him, Lord God. To reveal your power and your knowledge to him, Father, in the name of Jesus. The person that is out to get her son, Lord God, we ask you to touch his life, Lord. Turn him around, Father God. Reveal your power to him right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. In the precious name of Jesus. Oh, glory, hallelujah. We come up against it right now, Father. That no weapon formed against Lionel shall prosper. And every time they rise up against him in judgment, we condemn it right now. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' precious name. We just thank you, Father. Thank you right now, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God's got it. God's got it. Amen. Amen. You know, when we read the Word of God and we listen to these sermons and something really comes up, we got to believe. It's easy to be in church and someone's preaching and someone's singing and, and we're saying hallelujah, amen. But when real situations come through, we've got to stand on the word of God. That sermon that God just gave us is something for us to stand on. It's not just something for us to come in here and listen and say amen, hallelujah. No, we got to stand on that. Amen. God has given us this word to make us stronger. Because like Sister Jackie, some of you have been through things. Amen. She's going through something with her child and, and I know, I know that that is really tough on a parent. Amen. I know that that's tough on a parent. Amen. So we're going to continue to keep her lifted up in prayer and Lionel lifted up in prayer. And Sister Shanti, we're going to continue to pray for these children to keep them lifted up in prayer because 2020 is not over. 2020 is not over. There's been so much that happened in 2020. There's so much things, so many other things that could happen, but we are not fearful of it. We trust in God. No matter what comes our way. Amen. No matter what comes our way, we trust in God. Knowing that God's got it all in control. Amen. 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 Well, if there'll be nothing else, we're going to go to God in prayer and we're going to have our benediction. Um, again, like I said, we just want to thank everyone for coming out today to worship the God that we serve. And especially for the one that long travel, my aunts, thank you again. And for a lot of you that I have not seen, but virtually, I just want to say thank you. Amen. But just a couple of announcements. One, um, if you're in Galveston, if you're going to Galveston, Old Central will be serving dinners. And they're selling dinners um, at $12, uh, $12 a plate. And I can't tell you what the menu is today, but I know it's on the menu. It's real, real good. I mean, they had some chitlins and chicken and oh, it was, it's a lot of things. I can tell you the menu. Uh, and you can go to Dr. J and she can tell you what the menu is. Uh, for today is and you have to be there at 11 o'clock. It's, it's there. They serve it until it's all gone um, Two Like my mind the, the food got on my mind that fast <laughs> <laughs> And God is in the making and we won't be out here very long another week or two and then we'll be back in the sanctuary
ministry, Father, for the men of integrity and for the whole praise team, Father God. We thank you, Master, for all that's happened, for the scripture reading and the uh, inspirational moment and Sunday school lessons, Father God. We just want to say thank you. And for the preach word, we thank you, Father God. Now, Master, we ask that you would give traveling grace to those that are traveling uh, far distances, Father God. Bring them there safe and sound with no accidents, no incidents, Father God. And we thank you for those that are here today, Father God, family members, Father, the, those that may have been going through issues and experience and all kinds of stuff, Father God. We thank you for the word today. Father, it gives them strength and gives them hope, Father God. Yeah. They know that you are able to do it, Master. Yeah. Whatever it is, you're able to do it, Father God. Yeah. So, Father God, we just want to say thank you, Master. Thank you for the word that went forth on today, Master. Yeah. Now, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest rule in the Bible with us now, henceforth and forevermore. Let the church say, Amen. 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 You can give your offering on the way out. On the way out, just make sure you give your offering on the way out. Amen. Amen. You are now dismissed.